Hi, you guys. Uh, my name is David, and um, I thought after learning React, it'd be really helpful for us to take a deep dive into what's happening with the evolution of CSS and JS. So here we are. We've learned lots of React. Um, we've got the capability to wire our apps and make them work really quickly. But it was really interesting to me when I started to take a look at this topic, there was an actual intellectual debate. Um, uh, words that were used were things like uh, Cambrian explosion. Um, somebody said at one point there was a slide that was presented that was tweeted all over the place. I'll show it to you. Um, you could have heard a pin drop in the room. So there was a little bit of intellectual tension, which really paid off for all of us. I'll get to that. Hopefully the buildup is not too big. The other great thing that happened in the, in the midst of all this was somebody tweeted, hey, you fix CSS. So when I saw that, that really got my attention. It seemed like there was something really viable here to talk about. So let's go back to um, the other um, component in our stack that we're talking about now, the CSS. So um, go back in your time machine to 2014. For us, React started when we learned it a couple months ago. Uh, but it actually started in uh, May of uh, 2013 was when Facebook actually released it. But in late 2014, um, everybody was still dealing with inline styling. CSS was, there was a, some issues still with doing CSS inside of your actual components. And there were a lot of conferences going on out there. So, um, and before we go into any more detail on CSS, I think it's obligatory that we do some CSS jokes, right? So um, everybody's got their own little comment about CSS. Remember the, the Peter Griffin slide where he's actually, you know, trying to do the Venetian blinds, et cetera. Um, but my big thing with CSS is the whole term cascading. It makes me think of falling glass. I mean, that's the only thing that, you know, um, it comes, comes to mind for me. It's, it comes out of nowhere. It's very damaging. And uh, it's, you don't, you can't see it, you know, before it happens, which has a lot in common with CSS. So um, before we get done trashing it, it seems like um, somebody else got on the bandwagon here, too. So um, he actually, I guess he talked to his, his uh, son-in-law and who knows a little bit about Facebook and CSS. but. Um, okay, so I guess the jokes are over for a while. <laughs> Let's get serious. Um, there's a very uh, famous, I didn't know about this guy, but he's actually um, a computer scientist who does a lot of algorithms, and he quantified this by saying, our intellectual powers are rather geared to master static relations, and our powers to visualize processes evolving in time are relatively poorly developed. Basically, what he's trying to say is it's really hard to manage CSS at scale. <laughs> Um, you know, we can, you know, Einstein kind of said it best too, you know, we can uh, distinguish the speed of something but not the location. You know, it's really hard for our brains to work that way. Um, and to wrap it up, he said to shorten the conceptual gap, our, our job is to shorten the conceptual gap between the static program and the dynamic process. To us, that means getting stuff into scope, okay? So just keep that in mind. Remember, at this point, BEM, which is a uh, block element modifier, was really the mantra. So if you wanted to keep your scope local in your CSS, you had to give it funky names like, you know, button, price, component name, etc. So that was really the way it was done. And you had to keep all this stuff in your mind and not get them messed up, and that's where the bugs can actually pop in. So, um, and also, it's uh, kind of ironic to note, when you take a look at JavaScript best practices, what was the first thing we learned? Avoid global variables. So that's really kind of what we're dealing with with CSS. Most of the problems around CSS in React have to deal with dealing with the global namespace. So um, now here's that moment that I was talking about. Um, this was at the NationJS conference. The speaker was Christopher Shadeau. Um, his Twitter handle is Viju. I guess that's his GitHub handle as well. So his topic was React CSS in your JS. Um, notice the body language in the room. Um, I thought this was kind of telling. Everybody's got their arms crossed kind of leaning back. Um, he's just kind of like speaking his truth up there. I thought that was a little weird at first, but you know, we'll get into the more detail on that. Um, there wasn't any yelling or anything like that, but basically what he said was, you know, CSS has fundamental flaws at scale that can be solved by writing styles in JavaScript. So remember, these are the guys that wrote um, React. Uh, these are the authors for React. And so this is the slide that he put up. And this was tweeted all over the internet. Um, it talks about the issues that they encountered um, at Facebook in terms of using CSS at scale. And of course, Facebook is definitely an at scale organization. People talked about the separation of concerns, which to me is another funny term. It's kind of like, well, we can't really make it work the way we want to, so let's give it something with big capital letters like church and state, you know, that nobody argues with. So when somebody asks why we have to do it this way, separation of concerns. 
You know, so actually he went through all of these things and, and they basically have to do with keeping your, uh, your scope locally. If you don't keep it local, you have all of these issues like dead code elimination. Um, I can go through all these one by one, but probably not enough time. I encourage you guys to take a look at this presentation, which I'll put in the source files. But um, dead code elimination, for instance, is when you're doing CSS and you know, everything's working fine. We just push it up to GitHub and we see this code, but we're not quite sure what it means. But don't you dare erase it because I don't want to break anything. So it's kind of like, you know, I don't know what's working in here, but don't touch anything because we think uh, it, it, it could break if we do. So this is also kind of meta. So here I am talking about this guy's slide, showing another guy talking about this guy's slide. Um, just an example, I know it's kind of cool, it's meta, but the point is it's like it, it was such a big topic. You know, everybody was talking about uh, this for the longest time. Okay, so remember, inline styling is how we do it now. So if you, you can totally do this, it's pure JavaScript. If you go in uh, to your React components, you can just do a style component, and then you just declare it uh, with your brackets inside the component. That's the vanilla JavaScript way. Uh, but uh, Facebook, when he presented his solution, um, they built their own library called CX, and they also fixed the scope issue by having this forward slash name of the component uh, built into the actual class name. Okay, so that's just one way to work around it. He went through um, all the other examples and showed how they managed it with the CX library. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this library because I'm going to show you about 47 other libraries that did their own approach at this. And the good news is we have so many different options to do it. So he went through all of these. He showed that he solved them. The uh, number six and number seven, non-deterministic resolution, um, that kind of has to do with um, I've got something, uh, a class name, and it should be affecting this component, but it's not quite working. I have to put um, an exclamation point there for important to make it work. It should be working, but it's not quite doing it. Isolation is when somebody affects or changes a class name when they're working on their component, but they don't know that it's being ported into another component, into that namespace, and it messes that up. Isolation is probably the perfect word for it. So he presented this, and uh, some people pushed back, and one guy talked about separation of concerns, like I said, and the Facebook guy was like, hey, you know, it, that doesn't work for us. Separation of concerns is great, but not if it's creating all of this extra work for us. So fast forward to a year later. Uh, Christopher, you know, Christopher Shadow did this in, in um, 11, 2014. Sorry, uh, fast forward to um, the next year, around April, um, a lot of people were blogging about this slide and what he presented, and then all of a sudden, CSS modules was introduced. So um, the other thing that was in the background was still that the media queries and the, uh, the media queries and the pseudo classes still aren't working with inline styling with React. You can do it, but there's some funky stuff that you've got to do with it. Um, and then uh, this tweet popped out. So Mark Dalgaish fixed CSS, so he launched this library called CSS Modules. He did a lot of what the Facebook guys did, and basically it's default local scoping. I really encourage you in your projects you're working on right now, take a look at CSS Modules and some of these libraries I'm about to show you, but that's the first thing it does. And basically what it did is it allowed you to, uh, the other thing too, I love the logo, it's kind of ironic. Notice how the modules does not fit inside the box. We're talking about CSS, guys, get it? Okay, great, so, okay. So he gets props for his uh, ironic logo. Um, but this is it in a nutshell. Um, everything lives inside the component folder. You've got a separate CSS file, um, and you can call this button CSS, or you can call it your component name CSS, and then you've got a file for your actual component, and then you just import in, notice the import styles. So that nice classic ES6 uh, flavor of import, we can use that really nicely with CSS, and then just declare our styles inside the component and uh, then we just render our component down at the bottom. Now, that lends itself to a lot of really great things. Um, they built a library that kind of uses the SAS extends, so you can extend a class name using the keyword composes. So I can take one class, and if I like all the colors and fonts in that, but I just want to add something different to it for this other class, I just use the composes keyword. So uh, composition is there for us, and then you can do global scopes when you need it using the global keyword. And then you can also do theming. Um, so this allows you to actually take a theme and create it, and then you can use um, uh, your component, one component, as kind of a constructor class. And then you can construct it passing in the actual themes to wrap the themes inside of your components. 
And that might be if you've got a style guide at a company you're working for, you've got to use this logo color, this font size, et cetera. Um, and just to get through this really quickly, right after that, just a month later, after CSS modules and some guy tweeted that uh, Mark fixed CSS, you've got all of these other libraries that popped up. Now, some of these preceded this, but there's 47 libraries now that allow you to do uh, React pretty much with local scope. I'm sorry, CSS pretty much with local scope inside React. And um, that was actually called uh, the uh, CSS in JS. So it was notable to me that Dan Abramov actually tweeted that that made his week, you know, that he saw that. So that was pretty interesting in terms of somebody who's one of the forefathers of React. Uh, somebody else loved it too. Um, and the Pope actually got involved as well. So yes, they do uh, web design at the Vatican. This is just one other library. Yeah, the jokes are over, guys, sorry. <laughs> And then React.js, JSS is another one that was notable too that manages the local scope issue. The only thing that's kind of different about this one, um, just notice down here at the bottom, you import an actual method called use sheet, and then you call use sheet after you declare your component with styles as um, one of the parameters. So that allows you to pass those in. This gives you a good feel for this um, uh, repo in, uh, in GitHub. This guy took all of these 47 CSS in React libraries, and he did a button component, the Hello World component for CSS, and uh, showed you how to do a component with each of them. I know you can't read this, but you will be able to in the leave behind. These are some of the 47 libraries, and it gives you a chart for which features they cover. Uh, more X's across the board doesn't mean better. Take a look at your feature set in your projects, and that will determine what you need. And just to wrap up some of the takeaways for you, if you're doing CSS in React, try to make sure it does these things if you need it because these capabilities are there. First and foremost to me, human readable naming patterns without BEM, uh, component scoped CSS styling, composition, um, all the things that we know and love in doing component-based JavaScript. You can keep it all right there inside your component. So before we wrap up, I just wanted to represent this whole this slide again. This guy speaking his truth. Some people kind of like, eh, maybe some people pushing back because CSS is their life. And, uh, um, I saw this uh, summary, like uh, a poll question that came out there. I just Googled uh, separation of concerns, React and JSS, and there was actually a poll that was put up in February of last year. And it seems like the consensus is that people really aren't concerned about the separation of concerns. They're concerned about uh, making their components work. So that's it. I've got um, a slide for um, contact information if you want to get at me and talk about any of this stuff, and then um, a slide with a lot of the resources. So thanks for your time and listening. Thank you.